Welcome to the glorious African dawn. And now we heard a rumor that they're mating leopards in this area. So we're going to do our best to find them. Welcome to Safari Live. Welcome to the pre-dawn gloriousness of the African bush. And uh, we're sitting right down in front of Juma Vuyatela camp. My name is Brent and I have the incredible VM on camera. Now, I did see before I came out that there were some screenshots of looked to be mating leopards on the Juma dam camp. Guys, help me help you find the leopards. So can you let me know which way the leopards went? I'm going to keep moving, checking for tracks. Uh, I would much appreciate it if you could give me a direction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in front of the, the dam, cam, so you can tell me from where I'm facing which direction they went. Remember, this is a live African safari, so send in your questions through to the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or use the email address questions at wildearth.tv. Where in the world have the mating leopards gone? Okay, so if I'm directly in front of the damn camera now, here I am, I'm gonna park right in the light. Now, did the leopards go north, which is to my right, or did they go south to my left, or did they go west behind VM, or east behind the cam? So let me know. I did see the screenshot, so there should be tracks around here somewhere. I'm going to check if they went up towards final control first. Aha, thank you very much, Chris Rogue. Towards Twin Dams we shall go. So, um, James is going to be out l much later on this sunrise safari. Uh, like yesterday, I uh, was shooting some non-life stuff for Nat Geo, and uh, this morning James is doing the same. So you are stuck with me. Uh, we're not sure how long it's going to take, so uh, he will be out as soon as possible. Oh, because there's only one of us, we're going to be doing a lot of switching off and listening, because that's the best way to hear mating leopards. But while we're doing that, please continue to send through your questions and comments. We love hearing from you. Now let's have a look. Are there any leopard tracks here? I can see Brian Joubert's footprints from Walk. I can see some hyena tracks. But of course they could have walked out here over the open area. So just so far, just... Oh, wait, wait. Some civet tracks. Now, of course, the leopards don't have to walk on the road. It'd be quite nice if they did. So far, just hyena tracks, yeah, but we will keep checking. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head down towards the next road junction, and then we're going to switch off and listen again. Okay, so there seems to be a little bit of uh, confusion around there. So. If you have a look where I was sitting, in f directly in front of the dam camp facing, did they go right, left, behind me, or in front of me? So far we've got northeast and south, which of course are very different directions. Uh, 
Now what I am going to do is I'm going to call I'm going to call quickly the non-alive guys Connor, Connor and since they're shooting and they're not moving they might get audio on those leopards while we're driving Brian, Brian or James? Well, and maybe Final Control can get a message through to them while we keep moving. If I don't find any tracks here, I'm going to loop and head through to the north. So we're just going to get the guys who are filming out in quarantine to have a listen out for those mating leopards. Now, of course, a very distinct call. Uh, you don't really confuse it with too much outside. Okay, so just hyenas so far. Now, of course, out of all cam ops, I've got the best track spotter with me in VM, so hopefully between the two of us, we're not going to miss them. And it's really warm this morning, uh, but the bush, the end of winter tends to do that to you. It's about 20 degrees Celsius, which I think is 60-something Fahrenheit. And uh, tomorrow morning might confuse us and get really cold again. Okay, so Linda says there were three different leopards on the dam cam, and it sounds like Tingana and Shadow went left, and Karula went right. Um, okay, so we've got decisions to make. Viam, we go for the mating pair. We're going for the mating pair. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to head around towards Galago shortcut uh, and down towards the Galago pan. I think we, you know what we actually need on uh, the dam cam? Maybe we should go do that today, then we draw a little north, a little, take a pen, and we draw a little north, south, east, west on it. Maybe that'll make life a little bit easier for everyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sneak past the the shoot. Maybe not, we might interfere. No, I'm sure they'll get the message. If they hear the leopards, they will definitely let us know. is going to head to the Galago pad and then we're going to switch off and listen. Oh, it's getting a bit nippy as we're driving a bit quickly so we don't, can we can find those leopards. anyone's out to give us a hand. Good morning mobile stations. Look 
looks like we have the whole of Juma to ourselves at the moment. What do they say? The early bird catches the worm, and we're the earliest bird. Oh, final control's funny. The, the early Brent catches the leopard. Well, hopefully that's true. Okay, now we're going to slow down again. Start checking carefully for tracks. Fortunately, it's getting light quickly, which will make seeing tracks a little bit easier. Won't have to use my torch so much. So what I'm doing is I've turned the engine off and we're just rolling down the slight slope and I'm hoping that I can hear those leopards. important when it comes to finding animals. I think I probably find far more big cats using my ears than I do my eyes or tracking for that matter. It's not only their calls and the sounds they make while mating, it's all the other different noises that the other animals make when they see them. Ibis. <laughs> Lots of horn bulls calling. There's the hardy dog Ibis. I'm trying to listen. All that, did it, did it, did it, did it. That's all horn bulls. And you can see the sun's not quite up over the eastern horizon yet. Okay, let's move on to our next listening post. While we do that, let's get your grey matter churning uh, with a nice little quiz. And uh, since we're looking for mating leopards, uh, let's see, it's a nice easy one, get you easily into the, into the morning. And it's, uh, what is the gestation period of a leopard? You know the answers, questions at wildearth.tv or hashtag safari live on Twitter. Now Alice in Ohio is asking, is there an update on Shadow's Cub? Um, Alice, I haven't had a good look at those screenshots um, from the dam cam yet, but if it is Shadow, I'm afraid that means that cub has expired uh, if she is mating again. Now, the other female who's been mating quite frequently over the last little while is Shaluva2005 from the north. But um, if it is Shadow, I'm afraid that probably means that little cub has died and she is trying to produce some more now.
The hyena's calling. Can you hear them, Van? Just quite far in the distance. Sounds like inside Buffalo's hook. Definitely a predator, but not the predator we were hoping to shatter the dawn chorus. And the sound of leopard is mating will literally shatter any, any sense of peace and wonder we have around us. No tracks yet, so they might have headed towards Mvubu Road. Now it's really important in these situations to use any little downhill where we can that we can have the car off. Give me one second. The ground's very hard here, so unfortunately I don't think you guys are going to be able to see. I'm, it's not letting me get out the car. I am the best at getting wires tangled of all presenters. It seems to be a, an art that I've perfe see, see, yeah, perfected. Now the ground's very hard here. I think. Got them. Let's go. I can hear a leopard sawing, so not mating. And, uh, oh, it sounds like they're quite a distance already, but. At least we're getting in the right direction. And it is a wonderful Saturday morning puzzle to work out. So hold on. I'm just going to go to the easiest spot to turn around, which is right at the Gallego pan itself. I'm going to go. Ooh. Round and round the mulberry bush. Of course, in our case, it's a quarry bush. Well done to James, Anna, listen, Aaron, it was quite an easy one, though. And lip is just Asian period is 90 to 110 days. Uh, what do you think, Fiam? Gotta go shortcut near the fire break. Would be my guess. Wee! I think in another life I would have been a rally driver. See that drift done with expert skill. And we're gonna drift again. Whee! There we go. I can hear VM laughing behind me. Uh, I don't think it was probably the most skillful drifting ever been done. <laughs> it is an all-wheel drive after all. Yes, you are correct, VM. Take away my fun, VM. So I would have guessed that leopard was in this direction. So there seems to be a little bit of confusion about where the sun rises in South Africa and I guarantee you it rises in the same place it does in the rest of the world, in the east, and the sun sets in the west. And the only thing that's really different down here is the fact that 
We don't have too many buildings in the way when it rises and it's about to rise again but I just want to get a little bit further down this road to listen again and then we can have a look at the beautiful sunrise. Sorry, I'm just concentrating. I really want to find you guys these leopards. Here we go. We can actually just make out the sun now. It's popped. It's a large ball across, uh, just peeping up above the eastern horizon. Just listening carefully again. I'm going to carry on, but very slowly. This is the area where that sawing sounded like it came from. I think it could be a bit further to our west towards Albury's Road. But often the rule with tracking is make sure it's not or sort of block off an area, make sure and then move on. So far no tracks but I think those tracks we were looking at when we heard were of those leopard on the hard ground and they were heading directly west. I'm so concentrating on the road. Viem is doing the spotting of other things for me. What have you spotted there, Viem? It looks quite interesting. A tawny eagle. Not a Warburg's, a tawny. There we go. A tawny eagle. Now quite often they're the first of the birds of prey to find a kill, but I think in this early morning it's just where that tawny eagle slept last night, so we're going to keep moving to try and find those leopards. One really great thing about the dry season and this drought that we're having is that our visibility is incredible. We can see long distances into the bush. There's a little diker. Just take a chance to listen again. Look at that. Here he is. Little female. Oh. Now, watching us this morning, you'll see why it's so much easier to find animals when there's two vehicles, because one of us could have just sat and listened and uh, put the other in the right direction. But I have confidence in them and my abilities. I have confidence. I have confidence. Oh, my English has gone out the window this morning. I'm 
saying the leopard's still in Juma, a bit further to the south of where we are now. But with only hearing that one saw, it's difficult to gauge which direction they're heading. Apologies if my head's hanging off the side of the vehicle. I'm just trying to make sure we don't miss any tracks. But please keep sending your questions and comments through. We'd love to hear from you. Questions at wildearth.tv or hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. But to keep you busy while I'm tracking the next leopard quiz. And, uh, ooh, this is a good one. What is what age is the oldest recorded male leopard in the wild and where was it? What is the oldest recorded male leopard in the wild and where was it? And bonus marks if you know his name. Remember questions at wildearth.tv or hashtag safari live on Twitter. Hyenas. Thought I heard something there. And Vim spotted the same tawny eagle from a different road. Just find a gap through the trees. How's that, Vim? very huge safari live welcome to Carol in Calgary. Now Carol's wondering is how large is our area that we traverse? It's about 5,000 acres Carol but it is part of an eight and a half million acre unfenced wilderness that's called the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park that covers three countries. So even though we can't drive everywhere the animals can And Carol, what I'm doing now is trying to listen for leopards. I think Tangana might have been sneaky and come back towards Viratella Access. He likes to march that area. One of the, well, sad things for us, but is that male leopards can walk probably 20 odd kilometers in a night. And Tingana, who's our dominant male, uh, is a great walker of distance in short periods of time. So I'm hoping we, um, we do manage to catch up with him before he marches off property. Wendy. Uh, Wendy says, when leopards are mating, will they hunt together during that time? Uh, not necessarily, Wendy. Uh, remember, leopards are not cooperative hunters, uh, but if one makes an opportunist to kill while they're together, uh, they will sometimes both feed of it. Normally, it's the male who takes the most of it. I heard a squirrel alarming, but it's not. I 
I remember lots of the other little creatures can lead you to the presence of leopards and lions, squirrels, little cysticulars, birds, impala, kudu. So far, no tracks. And where am spot as a leopard? Good place to look, top of termite mounds. This time of the day, they're probably going to be on the move. A lot of elephants around here overnight. Tracks are all over the place. Nothing there, Vim. Nooks. Oh. Just going to have a quick look down the road here. Sometimes it's, or oh, it's not sometimes, it's always better to have a look on foot uh, for tracks. Uh, you d tend to see them a little bit more easily. And also it gives my ears a chance to work away from the vehicle because all the equipment that's sending you this wonderful picture does make a hum that does affect my hearing a little bit. Of course, the morning birds are making my life difficult. As soon as I stop, they decide it's the time to have the big dawn chorus. Hmm. Now the conundrum continues. Ben, where do you think Mr. Tingan has gone? Sandy's. Sandy Patch. I was thinking the same thing. Let's go have a look there. If not, we're going to go do it the hard way. Go back, find some tracks and work from there. I don't know, maybe you cut across to Zoe's, but let's check from this side. First, and then work our way back. Well, positive note, he hasn't gone north, which means he's still on Juma somewhere. And I said we're the only car out at the moment. Now, Now, Safari Dean says there was a 19-year-old male leopard in Botswana called Tukishana. Now, I've never heard of that. As far as I know, there hasn't even been a female leopard that's got to 19 years old. I think 18 is about the record, but I, I could be wrong. But Michael, as, as far as I know, that is correct. The Campan male, 15 years old, and he was on the southern Sabi Sands. I just got to be on the game drive quickly. Someone else is out to help. Morning, Andrew. Just me out at the moment. Uh, there was a mating pair of leopard on the Juma Dam camp at about five, but I haven't had any luck. I haven't heard them yet. 
but uh, I'm checking now towards Vertila access towards Sandy Patch. I did hear sawing uh, in this area about 20 minutes ago. Copy, thanks. It's fun trying to figure out where all the creatures have gone. Now there's been quite a lot of confusion scientifically with leopards over the years, with lots of subspecies being named. And with recent genetic tests, most of those subspecies have been completely dispelled. Uh, so, for example, there was a Kruger leopard, a Cape leopard, a Zambian leopard, and they're all pretty much exactly the same. There was even a Zanzibar leopard, but the only really distinct leopard subspecies, you've got your African, Asian, but even then it's so close. Uh, but the one that has been separated from other major leopard populations for the longest period and has developed some distinct genetic traits is the Amma leopard that lives in Russia. Snow, snow is a different species. No, completely up. So there we go. If anyone's wondering, snow leopard, clouded leopard, uh, those are completely old lion tracks, different species. Uh, that, I mean, they all have a common ancestor a long time ago, but they are, are genetically distinct and they would not be able to m mate and produce viable offspring. Morning to Little Garage Studio. Little Garage Studio is wondering how long do leopards mate for? We're not expecting them to be done so soon. Uh, no, not at all. Normally they mate for four or five days and they mate every 15 minutes on average. So hopefully, well, we don't know when they might have started mating. What I'm going to do is I'm heading up towards the northwestern corner of Juma. That's a bit of high ground. I'll speak to the guys in the west, see if they know anything about that. Actually, just while I'm thinking. Oh, fix my seat. Shamsun saying, shouldn't we have heard them by now with their 15 minute schedule? Yes, but unfortunately I'm driving, so there's a car making a noise and I've got this in my ear. So my, my hearing is, is good, but it's not as great as it could be. Now, I'm going to do a little cheating. Still no track, so I think they might have changed direction, which with mating leopards is, is not unusual at all. And I think they might have gone maybe further to the south. going with this. No tracks whatsoever, VMP. So, we've got two choices to make. We can either go back down towards Impala Road, or we head for Mvubu. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. What do you think, VM? 
they've either gone down Zoe's or they've gone further east because there's no sign of them here in the west decision time conferring with my cameraman at the moment yeah I, I'm not sure that that was them I think it could have even been Karula we heard calling yeah I think we're gonna get onto our northern boundary we're gonna check back towards the east and then onto Mvubu Road and then only then if we get nothing we'll head to the south but one of the reasons we're choosing the northern boundary is it means I can do long periods with the engine off just rolling down the hill And there's always a chance the Nkahumas will pop up. They've been in that area quite a bit. Just on the game drive radio for a second. Morning, yours. Uh, there was mating leopard in front of the Juma Pan at about five. Um, I haven't heard them again. I'm, I'm busy trying to relocate at the moment. I've done Galaga shortcut. I'm now going to do Buffalozok boundary down to Mvubu. And then, if nothing there, then maybe they have gone a bit further south. Mating leopards. Thanks, Jos. Um, yeah, it seems I haven't seen the photos properly, but it apparently it looks like Tingana is the male there uh, and Shadow the female. But um, I will only be able to tell when we find them. Copy, thanks. So there's an update from yours in the north that the Shaluva 2005 female was calling and looking for male leopard this morning, I mean last night. So this big road here is the northern edge of our traverse area. Good. Uh, Morrow, Dr. Light. Dr. Light would like to know who runs faster, Usain Bolt or a male leopard? Um, well, a male leopard's about double Usain Bolt's speed. Uh, Usain Bolt is a slow coach compared to a male leopard. Uh, a, a male leopard gets uh, just over 90 kilometers an hour, so about 24 meters per second. Okay, so we're hoping not to find any tracks crossing here, but we are hoping to hear them. So we've got a nice long straight run and oh, too much talking on the Game Drive channel. Here's that now. Turn that down. Trying to use our ears to find animals. Stop for a second. Take the ears out and listen.
Come on, guys, give us just a peep. Well, it seems like they're making life a little bit difficult for us this morning. Some impala. So, if the leopards had come this way, the impala would be shouting. Pff, pff. It is going to be quite warm today. I think we might get over 30 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's a male impala. Looking very relaxed. Now Tash is wondering how far can a leopard hear the call? of another leopard. Well, Tasha, it's uh, difficult to say, but I'd probably say well over 10 kilometers. Uh, they're not quite as deep as lions, so the sound doesn't resonate as far. No tracks, no tracks. I'm starting to think they might have changed direction and gone south. But let's check in Vubu Road first. Today I think it's going to be very warm. We're, I mean, we're starting on 20 degrees Celsius, which is a very summer-like temperature. But August tends to do that to you. You think, oh, summer's here, the warmth is coming, and then in three days' time, wax you with a good little eight or six degrees Celsius, and you freeze because you didn't take enough jackets. Andrew is wondering who mates more often, leopards or lions. Let's see, thought I spotted something. I did. Very cute little guy. Let me just try get into position. Don't fly away, little one. So Andrew, I'll get to your question in a second. So, Liam, on the closest branch of that weeping wattle to us, about halfway up the tree. Okay. A little bit to the right. No, no. Up a little bit. Center frame. A little bit, low. A little bit to the left. Up a bit. At him there. Right. Do you have a A little owl. Yeah, you can the left A little pearl spotted owlet. Just to the left of center. Let's 
see if we can try to get a bit closer. Now these owls have a very cool feature. Oh, there's two of them. He's turned around to look at us now. There should be a gap coming. How's that, Vim? Now. There he is. Hello, little chap. That's a little pearl spotted owlet. And there's actually a pair of them. Oh, one's flown off. So it's the second smallest owl species. Now look at that. Do you see that black dot on the back of his head? Now they've got false eyes. So in case anything tries to sneak up on them, it always looks like they're looking at you. I'm also just using this opportunity while we can look at the owl to listen again. So I'll show you what that looks like a bit more detail. So unfortunately on this camera this is as much as we can zoom. Okay, there we go. So, there we go, that's what the back of the head looks like the false eyes so it always looks like he's looking at you little pearl spotted owlet tiny 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 little guys about 19 centimeters so the leopards are just not playing along with us today so let's keep going all right little owl Hope you don't have too many drongos in your life today. So those little owl species are often mobbed by many other birds. Even though they pose very little threat to another bird, uh, most, most creatures don't like predators in their presence. What's that then? Hyena. So back to your question, Andrew, about who mates more often, leopards or lions. Uh, I would say it all depends on the situation. Uh, I'd probably say probably about the same. It, it all depends how many, or who, if they've got cubs or not. Obviously, while they've got cubs, they don't mate. And if you think about it, it takes the lions probably a little bit longer to reach uh, maturity or independence. So. Leopards, on that, purely on that note, probably mate more often because uh, they, their cubs reach independence at an earlier age than the lions do. So we're on Mvubu Road. Oh, 
Hi, Donna, who's a brand new viewer. Welcome to the middle of the African bush. And Donna's wondering what African bush it is. Well spotted, VM. Um, so, Donna, we are in the what is called, well, let's start small and go big this time. Normally, I go big and, and come small. Uh, female kudu hiding in the thicket there. So, Donna, we are in, at the moment, we are on Juma Private Game Reserve, which is part of the Sabi Sands Private Game Reserve, which is on the western border of the Kruger National Park. There is no fence. And so we've got the massive Kruger National Park to our east. We've got the Manyaleti Game Reserve to our north. And, uh, and we go a little bit bigger. And the, all of those reserves are part of the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park, which is eight and a half million acres. It's made up of three countries, South Africa being the largest, and then Zimbabwe, Mozambique. And in terms of we are in the country, South Africa, we are in the northeastern part of South Africa. In our, our province or state is called Mpumalanga, which means where the sun comes up, because we're in the east. So there we go, Donna, I hope that helps explain where we are in the world. So it is, I'm, I'm almost thinking, I have no idea where these leopards have gone, do you, Vim? They're giving us the run around. I also think we heard a different leopard calling to the mating pair. And that was way down to the south, west. an absolutely a gorgeous day out here. Yeah? It's a late winter's morning. It's going to be quite hot. I think we'll probably get over 30 degrees Celsius during the day today. There's some buffalo in the distance. They've made their way towards the Galago Pan. We got them through there, Vim. Way in the distance. That black spot is a buffalo. Here we go. So we know the leopards aren't there. I haven't heard anything from the guys filming on quarantine, so I wonder where the leopards could have gone. They could have moved far enough away that we can't hear anything anymore. Or if they've been mating for a few days, this could be to coming towards the end where that 15 minute gap becomes bigger and bigger. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to have a quick swing past where we left the Inkahuma Pride last night. Ali was hoping we might go have a quick look. Well, uh, with only one vehicle out on the whole of Juma, it's going to be very difficult for me to try find those leopards without some support. Hopefully, James will be up and running shortly. Uh, the lions, a little bit easier to track when there's a... Well, how many footprints were there, there yesterday? There were three males, five lionesses, five cubs, and a possibly another three cubs. So there's possibly 15 different sets of tracks to follow. A bit easier than one or two. So, thank goodness. 
Um, our spies on quarantine have come through. Uh, I'm not going to say the message that was sent to us, but uh, the mating leopards did do what we thought they might have done. We were still debating that they went south. And uh, so they went the opposite direction to all the directions we've looked. So hold on. We are Ferrari Safari. I get to practice my rally driving and very bad drifting according to VM. How's that, VM? Is that better? Okay. It's okay? Okay. Well, that's better than uh, the smirk I got earlier. There must be more dust. There must be more dust. Okay, VM. Is that more dust? Here comes more dust. There's always the option of doing a handbrake turn and losing the cameraman. Uh, if he keeps up with his uh, Saki comments this morning, that might be an option. <laughs> there we go, VM says, no one's ever managed to lose me. Well, the only cameraman that's ever fallen off the back was uh, Brian Joubert. And that wasn't even while we were on drive. It was while we were on our way back from final control, uh, going at about two kilometers an hour. I'm still not sure how he managed that. in Washington is wondering what's my favorite fun fact about leopards. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can get a, a direction from James. James, he's not concentrating. Just getting a direction from James where we should go looking since they are the ones who heard it. So they said the Zoe's clearing, which is just up here. So that is to the southwest uh, of where they were on Juma Pan. So, my favorite little fun fact about leopards. Hmm. We're not going to do any of the obvious ones, but uh, probably my favorite fun fact about leopards, uh, he's got a couple, is that the size of the leopard is completely dependent on the food availability. So, for example, a big male leopard in the Sabi Sands weighs anything from 75 to 90 kilograms, uh, and a big male leopard in the Cedarberg Mountains of the Western Cape weighs a mere 25 to 35 kilograms, smaller than Karula. Isn't that incredible? Now, the leopards here eat impala and kudu and stenbok and daika. The leopards there eat insects and birds and very seldom a kreisbok. Okay, so we're in the area where they heard those leopards. Please be waiting out in the open, clearing for us. Make it easy for us to find you. More than likely they are down towards the little river system where it's quite 
thick, but what we're going to do is just make sure there are no tracks on Zoe's Road. We're going to drive down to the base of the clearing and we're going to have a little listen. So I'd say we're probably about how long since we heard from Jam uh, from Final Control? Eight minutes? Seven, eight minutes? So we're getting into that zone where they should be making a noise again. So five minutes ago, so we got about ten minutes to go. Hopefully they're feeling very amorous and vigorous this morning and they get going a bit longer, a bit earlier. Okay. So Zanani is saying that Tingana didn't seem too interested in mating with Shadow last night, it seemed to ignore her advances. Now, that's not uncommon. Now, the female leopards are the instigators when it comes to leopard mating, and they, they sometimes literally just annoy the males till they actually mate. So I'm just going to have a quick squiz into these little gullies here from a bit higher. I'm also listening for any little sound from a, a little bird or an impala. Come on, leopards. But while we're sitting here listening intently, we can hear white-browed scrub robin calling quite vigorously. You can hear a golden-breasted bunting as well. One of the larger woodpecker species, tuk 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 tuk, either a bennetsa bearded or a golden-tailed. And next to us we've got a scotia that is retired. So this is a weeping boar bean unusual because they're not really fed on by elephants but this one doesn't look like it's been fed on by elephants maybe just old sometimes they get waterlogged during a very wet period There's an absolutely gorgeous array of sounds around us. I even hear a little somber green ball. Message from James. Um, it sounds like we finished to get between uh, quarantine and. So, in here. Well, then we're in the right spot to listen. So that's what James thinks they're in here somewhere. So let's go down. There's a, an old sightings road where we had the Inkahuma Pride not so long ago. It takes us there. So we should be on about 10 minutes now. So we don't want to be moving around with the engine on too much at this very moment to find those leopards. So I'm going to get to this little spot up here where I can see down into this little into these little gullies. Ooh, a very cool bird. I'm going to see if we can get a view of it from the other side there. It's on the move. It's 
done a disappearing act. Okay, so give you an idea. So James said between quarantine, if I go back up here, you can see quarantine over there on the horizon. It should be like a couple of minutes before the next bout of mating. I'm just going to step off the vehicle and it's just so I can hear a little bit away from the buzzing from the broadcast equipment. Well hopefully they're so close it sounds like they're on top of us but just in case they're not and I need to figure out a direction. So I'm just going to listen carefully. Now what I want you to do while I'm listening, I want you to listen with me and listen and try to figure out how many different bird species can you hear calling. Well, when you've got your bird species Send them through. How many different species do you think you could hear? Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter uh, or use the email address questions at wildearth.tv. I've got quite a few already. But it's not the call we're waiting for. We're waiting for the call of the mating leopard. Quite often, sometimes, well, sometimes when they're mating, they'll move between bouts of mating. Uh, we've got ourselves a nice spot. We've got some open areas where we can check in all directions. I just want to make sure they don't sneak behind us where we were coming out of one of these little river systems. But this is what happens when we're live in the African bush. We can't control when or where the animals are going to appear, so sometimes it does take us a little bit longer to find them. Wow, they've got behind us already. It's both. I heard them. Okay, the hunt is on yet again. Jeepers, how did they get there? Hold on. Hi, Addy. Um, Ali is wondering, what is my favorite part about doing safaris? Oh, Ali, it's being out in the African bush every day. Uh, it does, uh, the African bush has a much sort of calming effect on me, not that I'm a very calm person, uh, but put me in a big city and I become thoroughly unpleasant. It's okay for a few days, but anything longer than that. Um, I just love being out here. I love the birds, the bugs, uh, all the big cats all the little scrub hairs. I just really, really love the African bush and, and everything about it. So we're straight through there, so I'd say power lines. It's gonna be our best bet. Okay, have you guys keeping a clock? How's that? That was almost exactly 15 minutes. So keep a clock from when I made a jump to get into the car and uh, hopefully we'll actually find them before we have to listen again. Just trying to 
plan in my head where's the best way. It sounds like they were heading southwest. Quite often after that mating, they'll roll onto her back and then they'll walk a little bit. So we want to try and be as close as possible uh, just after the mating. Audio of mating leopards block between power line Zays and Impala Road. I'm following up. Okay, we were there, so anywhere around here is good. Uh, yes, I'm the only vehicle on the whole of Juma. Copy, thanks. It'll be much appreciated. Copy, um, if you do Zoe's around to the Balanites tree and then up onto Impala, um, I'm checking the power lines at the moment, but they were somewhere in that block, but it sounds like general movement is west. So I would have guessed they're about here. You know what you should always useful when looking for leopards in the African bush? Is a termite mound. Not only do leopards like to use it, but I can copy them. This is a really nice high one. Let's see if I can get my balance correct. Oh, oh. Should have been in the Olympics. Okay, I can see a diker. Now what I'm also doing is listening. Hoping to just catch that golden glow of a leopard moving through the woodland. We were parked, we were there. Sound was directly behind us. Okay, time to descend. Let's see if my descent was as elegant as my ascent. So if they are moving west, what we're going to do is we're going to go around to Impala Road. saying do termites bite I'd be so nervous to stand on top of a big, big mound like that well Ali indeed they do but that mound I was standing on is a dormant mound
Okay, we're just going to check very carefully for tracks out there. Those leopards are definitely in this block, but I'm just hoping we catch them before they cross the road. Just hyena tracks. So how's our clock going, guys? How close are we to that 15 minute magic moment? So we're about eight minutes out, so we're just gonna keep checking through these open areas, then I wanna come back to this exact spot when we're closer to that time to listen again. Wouldn't it be nice if they had made it easy for us and waited at the pan till I arrived? So, well done everyone. So we got five, ten, and six, I think, with the different bird calls you could hear. Uh, I had 12 or 13 before I got distracted by the leopards. Uh, so if you got any of these, well done. Uh, there were arrow-marked babblers. There was yellow-billed and red-billed hornbills. There was African grey hornbill. There was a scrub robin. There was a golden-breasted bunting. Um, there was a brew brew shrike. White browed scrub robin. I think I might have said that. Did I say that already, Vim? Uh, white browed scrub robin, crested Franklin, the towel Franklin. So there's 10. I thought I had 12 or 13. Ah, oh, yes, I heard some rattling cysticulars, 11, and blue wax balls, 12. Honey badger tracks. Come on, leopards. Stop torturing us, please. Fortunately, we got some help on the way. Uh, Yours is also coming into this area. So with two vehicles, it makes it much, much easier to find something like mating leopards that are constantly on the move. So we can position two vehicles in different places listening. So it makes it much easier for us to find them. And uh, hopefully, Commander Bond will be out and about shortly. Now, I'm really fascinated to find out which female leopard this is uh, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, I'm sort of sneakily, secretly hoping it's Shiluva 2005 from the north because I've never seen her before. But if it is Shadow, it's very interesting because it, it, it tells a bit of a story of the dynamics at the moment. There's been a lot of pressure put on Shadow uh, by Salah Hesh and there's also been a lot of young female leopards uh, wandering around that come from that same Salahesh dynasty and they seem to be running out of space in that, in that area. So we, we saw that, oh, what was her name, Inchila, the tail, uh, and uh, there's a couple of these young females looking for territory. And also with Salahesh, uh, is youngster Tiani coming just over a year now. She's going to be independent shortly. So you've got this mass leopard push uh, into what was traditionally Shadow's territory. Now, she could have lost those cubs to a female leopard, she could have lost to a hyena, but if she is mating, it's almost 100% that she has 
uh, lost that single female cub, which is a very, whoops, which is a pity because I thought that cub was very pretty. But one must remember that 70% of all little leopards born out here in the African bush don't make it to a year old. So I'm just going to take my jacket off. It's getting quite warm. Thanks, Vim, for not making me look like a spaz while I took my jacket off. So that's the area where we're hoping the leopards are going to pop out, and the last audio was from there. And we should be getting relatively close to the next calling time. So while we wait, please send me your questions, questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. So how's the countdown clock going? I reckon it must be about two or three minutes. Here we go, two minutes. So we're in the right spot at the right time. Okay, well we've got a, an interesting question in a, a different language. Liam, should I try to answer it in the same language? So the question is from Martinez and it's Goeie Moore. Uh, wat, oh, can, you, can you remember, wat moet ek doen, or wat? Wat moet ek doen om my wilds te wat moet ek doen om my wilds? Ah, wat is skills of training? Um, moet ek hee om my wild bewaarde te wees? Uh, ek is lief baie vir die natuur en die wild. That's about right, Liam. So, of course, Vim's first language is Afrikaans, mine is not. Um, well, morning, Martinez. Now, Martinez, uh, a passion for the wildlife and, and the bush is something you need, and it sounds like you already have that. There, there are different courses that you can do to become a safari guide. Now, a Wilt Bavada, a game ranger, is a very different thing to a safari guide. There's been some confusion in that. Safari guides only a person who takes people on safaris into, into the African bush, uh, where there's a game ranger is more involved in management and anti-poaching, fence fixing, road maintenance, dam building, all that type of stuff. So we're about, and Martinez, I'll carry on chatting now, I just want to keep quiet for a little bit, we're about on that 15 minute mark. Be nice if VM just spotted them coming through there. So there's a go away bird. We have one little alarm call off that way. A very strange noise. Elephants trumpeting upset. I think the leopards might be there. They're really giving us a run around this morning. I think they're just sneaking past us, probably 20 meters, 30 meters, just where we can't see them. On a positive note, even if the leopards aren't there, we got elephants. <laughs> So 
you want to get a hold of it, you'll see where he is and which direction he's coming from. Yours, yours. Yours, what's your current position? Copy, I'm, I'm just following up on some very upset elephants towards um, Impala Road, Sandy Patch. Uh, and I possibly might have seen them. But the last place I heard those leopard was between Zoe's and Impala Road, uh, just to the south of the power lines. Copy, thanks. Have? I need a tracks. Okay. Those elephants sounded like they were around here. Those Ellie's are here somewhere. Oh, there's a pretty white helmet shrike. Unfortunately, it's quite a busy road. Let's keep going back onto Impala Road. Let's just have a quick listen. Wonderful bird call around us. Now, oh, that I wonder where those elephants were. Where are the leopards? Why are they hiding from us today? Hopefully we get some luck shortly. Uh, any station in the west, copy. Morning, uh, any updates? Thanks very much. Just to let you guys know, there is a mating pair of ingwer that is heading west. We haven't managed to find them, but they're uh, around the transformer, oh, sorry, the power lines road at the moment, near the C1 Biliarathesa cut line. So here we are. I'm investing in telling the guys in the west as well. The more ears listening, the better.
Hi Fox in Osaka, Japan. Welcome on the live safari. Um, Fox is wondering, is it difficult to hear with the earpiece it in? It is. You'll often see me when I really want to hear. I just pop it out like that so I can listen. And also wondering, does VM have headsets on as well? He does. Uh, so for him, he's only hearing the direction of this microphone and my lapel mic clearly. Now we've got sometimes up to three different radio channels at once in our ear. We've got uh, quite often when in an area like this near the boundary, I have uh, the Arethusa game drive and the Juma game drive channel, and then also final control. Just hyena tracks. I still think they're this side though. I think those elephants might have been having an argument amongst themselves. So we're back in the area where I was hoping they're going to pop out. Then what do you think? Where are they? So what we're doing is, oh, we're being we're being owned by a pair of leopards this morning. They just seem to be one step ahead of us the whole time. And unfortunately, the the rest of the world's woken up now. I can hear tractors. I can hear building sites. So that nullifies our listening capabilities even more and also the warmer it gets the less sound travels because a lot of the other animals and birds are waking up can you hear another game drive driving past talking yours yours Yours, where did you think you had that audio? Okay, copy, thanks. So, yours also heard those elephants. Okay. Should we go check where those elephants are? I'm almost ready to give up on these mating leopards, although it's going to irk me if I do. But I think let's go check where the, the Ellies are. Why don't you let us know? Should we continue searching in this area for the mating leopards or should we go have a look at, see if we can find those elephants that were making a noise behind us? Let me know, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv. Check the planes. Yours is on the plans. Yeah, he's coming from that side. Come on, just pop up for us, guys. That's so...
Sometimes it's just so incredibly difficult, but it is live. So you've got to roll the punches. So let us carry on. Tom in Minnesota say so there seems to be a lot of animal droppings in the road. Uh, do they use them as borders or are they drawn to the roads? Well, a lot of our roads are based off old elephant paths or big game paths, uh, but most of the big droppings you see is just elephant and they just happen to be passing through. Uh, the predators will use them as nice highways to walk so they don't get dew in, on their pretty faces, but uh, they're not drawn towards the roads, they just happen to be near them while defecating. So we heard those elephants, I would guess, somewhere in this area here. And who knows, maybe the leopards changed direction again and that's what the elephants were trumping, trumpeting at. They could have just been trumpeting at each other, having a family disagreement. Oh, there's that yellow-billed hornbill Sunny himself on top of that tree there. Oh, there's a closer one now that I didn't see. Oh, he's flying. Off he goes. There's the one. Now look at him cleaning his bill. Now hornbills do quite a lot of grooming on their bill. And it is quite an impressive tool. Oh, off he goes. Now, I haven't heard from Final Control how, oh, there's one nice and close, how James is faring, but we are hoping that he will be out at some point this morning. There we go, yellow billed hornbill. Beautiful birds. And that very powerful beak. Now they'll use it as da very daintily to pick up little insects, but they'll also use it to break open and attack big bugs, scorpions even sometimes, lizards. But at this time of the morning, it's very common to find them sitting in the sun, warming up after the cold night. Oh. They do quite a lot of their feeding on the ground. So we'll watch, maybe this one's on the hunt. Little wing stretch. Okay, we're going to go see if we can find those elephants. Somewhere in this area we heard a trumpet. Well, Tom says, thanks so much for showing us that bird. It was really cool. They are very cool. We have a couple of different hornbill species out here, Tom. I'll see if I can show you some more. Now, Tom, a lot of our viewers out there keep a bird list of all the different bird species we see on the live safaris. And some of them have got over 200 species. So, but if there's anyone new and just starting your bird lists, we, I'll give you some of the more common ones that we just did, the yellow-billed hornbill. And there is the gray go-away bird. OK, 
Okay, there we go, the grey girl away bird. Uh, a very grey bird with a very loud and sometimes quite irritating call. Male leopard tracks. Okay. Sorry, brain tick, 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 ticking. And we're going to go around. And that's those tracks heading straight to where, where I think those elephants were. Mm hmm. Sneaky, sneaky. I think there's multiple leopards calling, to be honest. Uh, I think the mating pair is still to the south of us. And this is the leopard we heard rasping this morning because we were very close to here. Now we encourage you to keep lists of everything if you'd like, of the trees, of the flowers, of the, the mammals, um, or birds of course, frogs, insects, butterflies. Uh, we love them all out here in, on Safari Live. Cat in Tampa. Cat's on 89 birds on her bird list and says uh, she would love to get up to 90 soon. Well, Cat, hopefully we're going to be able to sort you out on the Sunrise Safari with number 90. Now there's the evidence that the elephants were around. A branch in the road. Uh, that's a bit old there, not the fresh one we're looking for. Now, Ali's wondering, are elephants more active at night during the day? Now, Ali, elephants are one of the creatures that are active for the majority of a 24-hour period. Now, having that massive frame, they have to keep feeding it. So they, on average, will feed probably 20, 21 hours a day. They don't rest very often. Specifically now, with this drought that we've got, oh dear, that's that terrible noise I heard. <laughs> they have dragged the road, so any chance of seeing a track is gone. Copy, thanks yours. Um, that tracks of a single male, but not part of that mating pair coming on Impala Road heading straight to the west. I'm just going to check uh, Triple M. Well, at least if we find any tracks, it's right on top because we're the first car to drive down here since the dust. So those elephants sounded like they were in this area, those leopard tracks are coming into this area. But both are being scarce this morning. So while we meander down here, let's chat to Martinez again about the Game Ranger versus Safari Guide. So 
So a safari guide is someone who takes tourists out onto safari and game rangers more involved with management. Now of course there are courses that you can do to do both uh, but my, with both of them my best advice is uh, if you can find an intern program, work for free, gain the experience. Uh, it's the most important thing if you want to work out in the bush. So because the road has been dragged, we're checking very carefully on the peripheries, trying to look beyond where the drag mark went. So I thought those elephants would have been smack bang here. Uh, I actually think I've figured out what caused those elephants to scream though. I don't think it was a leopard. I think it was a tractor dragging large tires down the road. They would not have liked that, so they've probably sped off. Now, Judy H is wondering why would they drag the roads during game drive time? Well, Judy, as much as it uh, <laughs> it affects us, it is it is the the, the main access roads need to be maintained. Uh, people need to go home to their families on weekends, uh, and and Saturday morning is generally the day that they do it. And uh, they only they don't drag all the game drive roads; they drag the main main access roads. It's not that big a problem. It's just what it is, and. Uh, one must remember that while we're on safari, there's a whole bunch of other people that are still working there, manning the gates, maintaining pipes, maintaining roads, and uh, being out in the bush, there's never actually enough time. So if any chance you get, you've got to do this type of stuff. But I'm pretty sure that's what gave the elephants a fright. Come on, Ellie, where you gone? Magnolia says, why would there be another male leopard soaring in Tingana's territory? I think your Magnolia, you'll find it's more likely it was another female leopard soaring. Uh, I think that male leopard was sneaking through. I think it might be Mvula. No, uh, it's unlikely, unless that male leopard's looking for a fight, uh, it would, then they would be soaring. Well, you can see there's our, our, our culprit up ahead, the tractor. Always worth a little listen. Ben, what do you think? We just leave this area now. Let's go somewhere else. What do you think? I think let's go to Buffalo Zook Dam. Let's go look for some lions. Okay, uh, I think we're just gonna shake off this area for a little bit. Uh, let's make our way to a different section of Juma. Uh, let's go see if we can find any tracks of the Inca Hummus. But I'm secretly hoping as soon as we give up, they pop out in front of us. Mm. Uh, Jason's wondering, did the lions go back to the rotting buffalo? Uh, Jason, I don't think so. Uh, but we'll go find out. Let's go see if we can find those tracks. So yours is sitting up ahead listening there. So let's go this way around and head down towards that the south and east. Or the, sorry, north and east. 
Morning, Michael. There's some uh, very frustrating mating leopards somewhere between uh, Zoe's power lines and Impala plans. Uh, yours and I are following up, and that's the only update uh, for the morning, apart from Lion Audio somewhere deep east in Torchwood. Firm. I, you can take Zoe's. Uh, yours is on power lines at the moment. I'm on Impala Road, so Zoe's is open. Okay, so yay! A third person is joining the search. We're going to do one last loop through here. Who knows? Now, because we said we're not looking for them, they'll pop out in front of us. Now we must be getting very close to that 15 minute mark again. Well, about two minutes left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we've got yours waiting there. We're gonna wait a little bit further along and then if we don't hear anything or don't see anything, we're gonna throw in the towel temporarily. So we're getting to the right point to start listening again. And uh, I know a lot of you have been asking about stop. Let's do 10 interesting facts. So I'm going to call the stop today just because we're going to stop right here because it's a good spot to listen for leopards. So while we listen for the next few minutes, I'm going to find 10 interesting things around the car. Okay, where to start? Number one. Mm. No, 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 that one's too, too, too obvious. Wishful thinking. Uh, okay, so ooh, this is quite tough. I've chosen a tough spot to do this. Uh, so we've got one definite interesting fact. Number two. Okay. What else, what else, what else? I know what I need to find, I know what I need to find. Of course it's always not there when you're looking for it. Oh, I'm going behind now. Let's just get a dead branch there. Ha ha. Let's make sure it is what I think it is. Hmm. 
<laughs> Yay! What are we on there, Liam? We're at two. One on the bonnet. Two. Three, four, five. Okay, so we got five. So I'm still listening. But yeah, let's go have a look down here. This is a really difficult spot to do this. On a sea plant, so you don't have that many tree species to choose from. So let's try something a bit different. Let's look for a track. In the nice soft sand next to the vehicle. I suppose that one will do for a bit of a change. There's number six. Okay. Did you hear that? It did sound like a cow. It is a cow. I can hear cow bells as well. Must be on the fence line, the wind's just blowing in the right direction. So he's sitting there going, No, it's not a buffalo. No, dung, 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 cowbells. <laughs> so that's, um, if we have a look onto that horizon there, uh, just beyond that horizon is the western fence line uh, with the communities. Well, that cow almost sounds like he's inside, but I don't think he is. Okay, well, <laughs> there's. Number seven, there's a cowbell ringing. But anyway, uh, what should we start with? What should we start with? Let's start with this. This is the yellow justicia. Beautiful little flower. Now, grows along sea plants, but one of the reasons it's, it's quite interesting and the nice little fact about it is uh, the village at the southern southwestern corner of the Sabi stands is called Justicia. So originally it used to be a farm called Justicia so most of the villages in this area were originally named after farms specifically in the south you've got some very strange names uh, Lilydale, Huntington, Justicia and but there we go that's the little yellow Justicia scientific name Justicia Flava of course Flava being yellow. Now, the reason I chose this, and that was from that bush behind us here, and you can see very square, this is a, a grivia or a raisin bush, but the very cool thing about this is a lot of walking sticks are made out of bigger ones, and the most incredible thing about them is if you take the stick, so you actually want it to make a, a nice, wait, let me get my big stick to show you. So this one is just pure luck, uh, and it's not a grivia. So I found this, the elephants did the job for me. So this was pure luck. But in most cases, it's very unusual to get a nice, really straight branch like that. So grivias are one of the fa uh, favorites of the local people to make walking sticks out of. But quite often, the kinks in them. So it's, a, it's incredible. I wouldn't have believed it, but if you cut it green, but you also want this part that's coming out of the ground. So this is part of the roots. So they dig it out and then chop there. Now this is what your, your head is always made out of. But when it's green, I've watched guys make them, they take it and they slowly pull it through a fire and you watch the wood straighten. It's the most amazing thing. So Grivia, the wood straightens when you pull it through a fire. A really, really great, um, great way to make a nice straight walking stick. Now the other thing about Grivia is it's a raisin bush, although there's not many fruit on it at the moment. But you can make uh, alcohol out of it, you can make, so that's what are balmy facts we are now? Walking stick, flower, ra uh, yes, you can make alcohol uh, out of it and it's quite potent. And the, the first sort of... Hey. 
heard those Franklin alarm calling, but they do panic easily. Um, so the first colonists in Africa often used to make also preserves, jams, all out of the raisin bush, but uh, there was quite a powerful mampur, what's the word, mampur moonshine that was made out of the grivia as well. Now this is a multiple fact. So we've got this here. Now look at that, it's completely black. Now how many termite mounds do we see that are black? Not many, do we? No, most of the ones we see are, are, are white and sandy. So these are called black mound termites and they're actually much, much smaller than normal termites and uh, they bring clay out from deep in the soil and you only find them in certain areas. So if we have a look here, this one is uh, not alive, that's why I kicked it. But well, that's another one that's not alive, but there's a little black mound termite. Mound, see how much darker it is? So they're bringing clay from deep uh, deep under the ground and uh, they have a completely different set of funguses and stuff that they grow. So black mound termites, their mounds are always really small. They never get massive like the rest of the termite mounds. What are we on there, VM? Six? Somewhere there? VM's just shaking his head laughing. Oh, there we go. That is the piece of the exoskeleton of a millipede. And why I've chosen that is that a millipede, or a songololo as we like to call them in South Africa, is quite an interesting animal. Very, very few things can eat it. So it feeds mostly on detritus and rotting vegetation and the leaf litter and, and rotting animals sometimes. And because of their diet, uh, they, 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 get, they become very, very noxious. So they've got a type of cyanide uh, that's, that's in them. And mammals, really can't eat them. There's only really one mammal species in southern Africa that can eat them, it's the African civet. Now their pancreas uh, creates an amylase that breaks down the proteins of that, of, the, of, of the millipede into safe, harmless proteins that are able to be digested. Now, now that is, I'm trying to think, I've forgotten, I've run, out, I've run out here. But also, strangely enough, if we move up Africa, as a bonus fact on the millipede, that dica species eats a lot of millipedes. So in the rainforest, being small, and a lot of the food and fruit and stuff being way up in the, in the air, the dikas there actually uh, will eat millipedes and insects to supplement the proteins in their diet. So in southern Africa, only the civet can eat, but if you move into the central African rainforest, and there are a lot of millipedes, and big ones, I've seen them as, almost as long as my forearm here. Now I think we're on, Seven. Maybe Final Control can remind me. I think we're on about seven facts. And no sign of those leopards. So we're going to finish the facts. And then we're going to move on. Okay. Now this is quite a cool one. Now have a look at these thorns. They don't look like they're going the way they should be. They're quite bent and there's this big sort of swelling in the center. I'm just going to try to get something out of my box here. Sorry, I need to get my, my knife. Where's my knife? Okay. So, let's have a look. Well, let's try this one first, the small one. Okay. So you can see that this doesn't look quite natural. It's quite swollen. Now, I'm thinking this is probably an ant that's done this. Let's have a look inside. Oh, this one didn't quite work, but it's really, really hard for a thorn inside there. So I'm going to go for the bigger one, which is the one I was really interested in. So you can see how this is incredibly swollen around the base of the thorn. Now there's ants and wasps that do this. Uh, on these acacias, I'm, I'm thinking it's more than likely an ant, and this is of course a red thorn, Acacia gerardi. Let's just get in there without stabbing ourselves, of course. And what they do is, the reason that they, they bite, they actually bite and, 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 and uh, irritate the section of the thorn 
which causes the uh, tree to release globulin, which is a growth hormone. And it's to make a nice protective little casing for them to lay their eggs in. And what happens, it also makes the thorns become quite hollow. I'm just going to chop that off. Oh, sorry, someone's calling me on the radio. Standing by. Copy, thanks, Mike. I've been sitting for about seven, eight minutes now listening. I think they've gone flat somewhere in that in those monkey orange thickets in the middle. Okay, like let's try again. Oh, it's like snippety snip snip. And sometimes it's really, really hard. I don't want to get my fingers. Yeah. So there we go. Oh, we can't. I squashed it a bit. But these ants are so small that they only need the tiniest little section in there. But they've got this really, really hard outer casing of the thorn to protect them. That is amazing. So that was number eight. Ha ha. Number nine is the sound of a hornball. No, I mean, uh, woodpecker. No, I'm joking. Um, number nine and number ten are to do with the area we're in. So if we have a look across, you can see it's quite open. Only a few little trees and heading down towards quarry thickets there. Now, this is a seep line. And it's the bottom end of a seep line. So this area is high in nutrients and high in minerals. So you quite often get erosion like this when it rains because all the water from the top of the the drainage oh, the, all the water that's drained from the top of the hill under the under the ground is comes out here and it creates these wonderful sort of manicured lawns uh, that often attract many many species of antelope except for today of course <laughs> okay and uh, the really really cool thing oh yes well done Vim. i forgot number 10 the track now one we don't look at too often, that is an impala track. We often look <laughs> at everything else, the cats, the hyenas, the elephants, but I just thought a little impala track. Now how I know it's an impala, not an inyala. Now inyala and kudu and animals like that, their tracks register. But that, oh I need to get out of the car again. So what I mean, register, so a lot of the animals that live in thickets and stuff like that, they don't want to be heard when they walk. So when they walk, let me do it there, they go front foot, and then as they, I can't, don't have four legs, but they, they do that. So, they, so as, as they walk, they put their, their back foot where their front foot went. So if we have a look here, if this was an Inyala or a Kudu or one of the Trafalagids, there would be a register, so there would be another track over it like that. So you'd almost have a double track. So there we go. That's fact number 10. I'm over these leopards. I'm leaving the area. Let's go see what else we can find. Doesn't look like we're going anywhere. Ah, there we are. <laughs> Jason's asking me a question I'm not 100% sure on the answer of. Is it legal to make moonshine in South Africa, Vim? Yeah. It, uh, we think so. We're not sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can buy it on the side of the road. Well, it's, I suppose we're allowed to brew beer at home, so why not moonshine? Who knows? Uh, not that I have uh, made any moonshine. <laughs> uh, Vim, have you ever made moonshine? No, we're not the moonshine type, I'm afraid. Now, uh, Donna is asking, what is a seep line? Uh, Donna, a seep line is what we're looking at there. Now, it's very important in the bush. Uh, it is an area where the water travels under the ground. 
uh, on a duplex soil. So a duplex, double story, so you generally have gritty granitey sand on top which acts as a filter and normally about a meter, meter and a half down you hit a clay base and then the water gets stuck up against that clay base and moves down the hill there so it creates quite waterlogged areas which is very good for grass not so good for trees so where it's good for grass it tracks animals like zebra, wildebeest, impala uh, and uh, all your grazing species, buffalo and they're very very important part of areas because they hold grass for longer during the year uh, and also the quality of the grass on these seep lines is much much better uh, than on the crests. Yours and Mike, I'm going to leave this area. I've had no luck and I've been trying for two hours. Copy, thanks. Uh, well, good luck for the rest of your morning. Hey, Firm, hopefully this afternoon. Okay, so we're leaving this area. We're going to go see. Let's go have a look down at Treehouse. Uh, yours, I haven't looked, I haven't checked uh, at all this morning for the lines. Okay. We've got an interesting question from Robin, who's 11 years old and is actually coming to the Sabi Sands tomorrow. Aren't you a lucky fish, Robin? Uh, Robin would like to know, how do we identify the different leopards? But sorry, Robin, I have to be on the radio again. I'm the only person out this morning. Standing by. Closer to Impala Road, power lines, and say somewhere to the south of that corner. Okay, so here we go. Let's have a look here. We're going to show. It. Robin, how we tell the difference between the different leopards. Now, fortunately for us, we see them quite often, so it's a little bit easier. But um, if you don't, the best way is uh, to look at their spot pattern. Now, of course, a leopard's got a lot of spots, and you can't go look at all the spots because um, that'll be a bit difficult to see all the spot patterns. There we go. Let's choose one of my favorite leopards. How's that, Fiam? Yes, there we go. Now, that is a leopard you might see, Robin, in the Sabi Sands. It's, his name is Quarantine, and he's a young male. Now, when I talk about the spot pattern, I'm talking about this line of spots that are just above his last line of whiskers. So, if we have a look. I don't know, sorry, the light's a bit tricky today, but quarantine is at 3, 2. Now let's have a look, this one's a bit easier to see in the light, I think. So there we go, so there's his last, last line of whiskers, and there's his spots, 2. So, Robin, if you want to know about the leopards where you, in the area you're heading, I think there's actually a whole bunch of Facebook pages for them, so go have a look. Get their spot patterns written down, and then you can try ID them when you arrive tomorrow. So, Vim, I think actually James and Brian have decided to just take the morning off. What do you think? I think they're, they're, they're laying about, drinking coffee and having biscotti. Oh yeah, 
I think let's go head towards uh, the east. Maybe we'll have some luck with lions because we certainly haven't any, had any luck with these leopards. They are in, uh, quite a, a, Well, I think they're in this area. That's where I definitely heard them last. But it is a very big area. They could have gone flat in the middle of the block because it is getting warmer. Uh, but hopefully, maybe James has got the leopard luck today. I'm going to go test my lion luck uh, in the east. Oh, there's some zebra. Uh, let's try and find a way through. They are quite far in the bush, in the thickets. Oh, on top of yours. It's going this way. Okay, sorry about that. Um, we've just spotted some tracks. We're trying to figure out what's going on now. These are female tracks, and I'm trying to see if they're on top of yours's tracks. It doesn't look like it. Now, hi Doug in Arizona. Doug is, says he's planning uh, a holiday for his grandkids and his kids to Africa on safari. And Doug says he knows it's a problem if kids make a noise on the vehicles, uh, but is it a problem if kids make noise in the lodges? Well, Doug, it depends on how big your family is because there are certain lodges that would be small enough to accommodate your whole family, sort of a maximum of sort of 10 to 14 beds. And that's what I would definitely recommend uh, if there's quite a lot of you. And then they can make as much noise as they want because it's just you guys in the camp. Now, of course, uh, generally, if it's a bigger camp or a bigger lodge, uh, you are going to have to take a private vehicle if you've got kids under the age of 14 with you. Uh, and that's just so they don't disturb other people on game drive. But I would say from seven years old is a perfectly acceptable age uh, to take a, a child on safari. They will enjoy it thoroughly, probably more than most adults will. Uh, and uh, it is definitely a, a wonderful idea, Doug, and I wish you the best in your endeavors to take your family on a once-in-a-lifetime African experience. I wonder where those female leopard tracks are. You know what, Vim? We're not looking for leopards anymore. I, I'm done with leopards. Psst, leopards. Oh, no, and then you see a track and you can't help it. Oh, no, I'm not looking. Let's just get away from this area completely. Ah, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Aaron in the land of the long white cloud, New Zealand. Uh, Aaron is wondering if we managed to see any banded mongoose on my camera traps. I haven't, but Viam and I actually saw banded mongoose on game drive yesterday, but they were too quick before we could put them on camera uh, down around Twin Dams. Uh, maybe we'll go. Let's go look for banded mongoose. We probably got more chance of that than finding a leopard, is the way our luck's going this morning. Standing by yours? Sorry. Oh, 
Okay, copy. Karula was seen on the dam cam earlier. Um, I just saw tracks on top of your tracks now at Balanites heading that way. I'm going to come give you a hand in that area of yours. I said I was going to look for leopards. But now there's tracks of Karula and cubs. Uh, I'm at Zoe's junction with uh, uh, Solomon's Katan. Copy, thanks. Okay, so yours is going to wait for me. He thinks he's got tracks of Karula and cubs. He's not sure. So he's going to call in the expert, although after my dismal performance today, I don't know if I can call myself a tracking expert anymore. But let's get down there, see what's happening. Uh, and maybe in the next few minutes, James might have finished his, uh, his third breakfast. I, I can imagine Brian's lounging in the sun, enjoying himself. But, no, I'm only teasing, of course, they have been working quite hard, but it would be nice to see them out on the Sunrise Safari. Okay, well, it seems like James has finished. I was going to say something rude, but uh, lounging about and having a, a, a nice relaxed morning, so let's Let's go say good morning to him and Brian. It has been a lovely morning, everybody. We've been at the tent here. There it is. Good morning to all of you. I must apologize for being uh, a little late this morning, but we had to film some things. Uh, we had a good time, and I hope you've been having a good time on drive too. I'm very frustrating with these leopards. It so often happens, isn't, doesn't it? that we see tracks, we see things at the dam cam during the course of the night and then there's just nothing in the morning. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on what was going on there last night. I'm sure you've been discussing it with Brent ad nauseum. Shadow and Tingana mating, correct? I think that's what I saw. And some very, uh, well, our sort of resident leopard experts confirmed that those two were the two mating. I didn't see a very good picture of them. What does it mean? Well, I'm sure you've discussed it all with Brent. Uh, my personal opinion is that yes, it probably does mean that Shadow's little Zara is no longer. But we don't know that for sure. Who knows? And apparently Karula was also seen at the dam this morning. And I believe that Yors has just picked up her tracks down uh, sort of to the south of where we are now. And that Brent is heading that way to help out. So with any luck we might have her perhaps. What we're going to do, we've only got a sort of half hour left, is we're going to turn down left over here, go around that side of quarantine clearings. You know, those mating leopards, if they are around here, and I'm pretty sure they're around, they will be moving. So although Brent has driven this area flat, so is yours, so, ver so have various others, it's not impossible that they could just pop out in front of the road just exactly where those two have been driving. So we're going to pretty much mirror the route that they've driven and see if something doesn't pop out and maybe we'll be very lucky with Karula. I hope you've had a lovely morning. It has been a very beautiful morning, I must say, but the sun has turned it slightly sort of that white colour of the heat and we're apparently staring down the barrel of 34 degrees Celsius today. That's pretty warm, isn't it, Brian? Yes. Brian is on camera, everybody. Brian, is there, have we got a thumb this morning? Oh, of course we do. There it is. And what is the thumb this morning? Sunglasses. Ah, yes. Needs the sunglasses and tie. Very smart. Wedding thumb, perhaps. Well, Going to a summer wedding. Filming, yes, he was filming. For a while, I thought of a wedding thumb. Anyway. <laughs> Louise reckons that's Mr. Anderson thumb from the Matrix. I think that's quite good. Now, if you look down over there... You can see a green tree. Can you see the green tree behind the silver cluster leaf? Way on the other side there. That bush. No, 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 no. Not that, not that bush. Uh, just to get there. To the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, that's it. Those green trees, everybody, are where the tracks are that Brent is now trying to follow. And that's on Finns Road, just across the road from Finns Road. And, you know, we can't see nearly this far in the summertime. And so it's quite nice to just drive around and every so often stare onto the clearings on the opposite ridges. 
And it's also a good opportunity for you to get an idea of the lay of this land and how undulating it is. We've had a couple of questions about extreme weather systems and tornadoes and do we get them here? And the answer is no. You can, you can see why we don't because the land is gently undulating. There's very seldom any completely flat land. There's very seldom any steep land either. But it's very gently undulating. Very ancient. Many, many millennia old. Oh, there's an impala, Brian, our first animal of the day. Do you think it's going to be devoured by mating leopards? Potentially, maybe, Potentially, maybe indeed. There's a ram standing behind a knobthorn tree. And thank you to all of you who say you're very happy to see me and the tent. Um, unfortunately, the tent is not going to remain where it is. It's going to be taken down after breakfast. We can't leave it on quarantine clearings because, of course, um, you know, we have lots and lots of people driving through here as guests and quarantine is the most obvious feature on Juma and it just means that they are faced with a tent every time they go out on game drive but you will be pleased to know perhaps that we are putting the tent up in a different location fairly soon and that different location is quite close to the DRC where we live and from there we'll be able to do a slightly more permanent setup and perhaps we'll include it more in the drives especially as summer progresses and the bugs and insect, other insects and the arachnids, they all come out as we get a little bit of rain. And there you can hear the dulcet tones of Michael Grover's daughter singing in the background. Very nice, isn't that, Brian? <laughs> Hello, Austin in Florida. Uh, you might very soon be called uh, Thomas in Florida if you're not careful. You say, is this really live? You are a new viewer. It is absolutely live and it's a joy to have you with us. Thank you for sending us a question all the way from Austin in Florida. Good morning, good morning. How are you? Good, you? Full of joy, full of joy. Um, uh, we are very live, completely live. And there have been a number of people throughout the years that have doubted the veracity of our claim to be a live safari operation, but that is what is going on, Austin. And so please keep watching. And with any luck, you'll be able to see the leopards that we see, the lions, and the buffalo, and the elephants, and the hippos, and all the other incredible creatures that we hear, including a bird list of some 250-odd. There is one of them. Austin, so if you want to keep a bird list like many of our viewers do, there's your first bird, and that is the yellow-billed hornbill. Yellow-billed hornbill is a good thing to say in the morning when you are warming up your lips. And he's eating termites out of the dung. And he's all very well eating termites, but why he had to choose the ones in the dung there, well, no one really knows. Hello Kyle, very good question from you. You want to know if toucans are related to hornbills. They're not directly, but they are apparently an example of what we call convergent evolution. And you find lots of these examples between the New World and the Old World. So you find hornbills in the Old World, so that's Africa and Eurasia, spread all the way into India, down into Southeast Asia, you will find various species of hornbill. But you don't find them in the New World, which is the, American, in the Americas. But you do find toucans there, and they've got similar kinds of bills, uh, or beaks, and that means that they've adapted to eating similar kinds of things in their specific habitat. And that's what we call convergent evolution. Another great example of that would be the hummingbirds, which we don't find in the New World, Old World, sorry, and the sunbirds, which we do find here. So we've got sunbirds and uh, hummingbirds occur in the New World, and that's another example of convergent evolution, where two completely unrelated species have developed the same strategies to cope with similar ecological conditions. Hello Bradford, I'm not sure I know the answer to this. You want to know why when you're in the Kruger Park, why do these hip uh, 
hornbills, not hippos. It's not a hippo, is it, Brian? No. No, it's a hornbill. Why do they like to sit on the mirror of your car and clean themselves in front of the mirror for hours on end? I don't know, but we do know that birds uh, are attracted or repelled by mirrors because they see themselves and they don't know that they're looking at themselves and they think they're perhaps dealing with a competitor. And so maybe it's some kind of preening. It, they might, in the case of the hornbill, for example, think that they're looking at a female. And so they may, or if the female's doing it, a male. And there might be some kind of a ridiculous courtship display going on that escalates too much sort of higher levels as the behavior of the hornbill in the mirror is repeated in front of him. All right, let's carry on. We don't have too much time, so let's carry on around the corner here, see if we can't pick up some sign of those lepards. Let's give Brenty a little bit of time on the tracks where he is. Those tracks are on top of the tracks that Brent and yours made today, so Karula is around somewhere. Might be worth checking Ingwe Alley. She does like to be on Ingwe Alley, which means Leopard Alley. Well, Paige, this is a very interesting comment from you. You say, could Shadow's hormone cycle be unusual or messed up? And that might be causing her to mate unusually early uh, in the life cycle of her current cub, which may or may not be alive still. Uh, Paige, until I'd seen her with Sandila, which was her cub from before, which I'm sure you've talked about with Brent, I would have said no. Um, I would have said it was almost certain that the cub was dead. But she came into estrus very soon into Sandile's life. I think he was, he was eight months old, I think, when she came into estrus and began to mate again, or certainly looked like she was going to mate again. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's unlikely that, uh, I think her hormone cycles are perhaps messed up. I still think that this is really early, though. I mean, those, that cub is now... Five and a half, no, six and a half, six and a half months old. So not much younger than Sindile was. It's possible. The cup might be fine. We don't know. Yeah, and Heidi, you reckon maybe Shadow is sidetracking a male leopard in order to prevent him killing her current cub? Um. It's not a strange male leopard though, Heidi, this is Tingana. And Tingana, we know, is the father of, well, we think, is the father of her current cub. Um, and he is probably certainly under the impression that he's the father of the current cub. I mean, they've been seen feeding on a kill together. So he isn't a threat to the current cub. So I don't think that's what it is, A. And B, I don't think that they think consciously enough to do that. Um, you know, I... And remember that it's the females that seek out the males with the leopards when they're ready to mate. It's not the other way around. I mean, there'll be a little bit of effort from the males, but the females will definitely seek out the males. And it's interesting, there were tracks yesterday of a female and a male crossing south, and the assumption was that it was Karula uh, crossing south with Tingana. I don't think it was. I'm pretty sure it must have been Shadow and Tingana crossing out. Now... Round about sunup this morning, we were sitting there, I was sitting in a tree, the drone was flying around me and so the sound wasn't clear, but I thought we heard the sounds of mating leopards in this area. Now Brent makes that sound very nicely, I'm going to make an attempt at it now. There is a Senegal lapwing that we'll just have a quick look at. And it's always a good idea, as I'm sure Brent said to you today, to just stop and listen. You have to stop and listen if you're looking for leopards. Mating leopards, that is. Because they make that sound, Brian. I'm going to give it a go. Please don't laugh at me, Brian. I go... Oh, lovely. You like that? It was amazing. Thank you very much. The lapwing thought it was in the company of mating leopards. Fear not. Is it on a nest? Or is it just sort of sitting, pretending? I wonder if they don't do that to pretend there's a nest there, to attract predators towards an area where there isn't anything. That's quite clever, don't you think? Yeah. Very clever, Brian. All right, I didn't hear anything other than the sound of my own loud voice, so let's carry on.
And Debbie, you are interested in whether a female leopard, there's a water buck over there, will mate with multiple males or just one. Debbie, a female will sometimes mate with one, sometimes with multiple. It's not unusual for them to mate with multiple males. And we're not really sure why, but the postulation is that they try to confuse paternity. So we know that uh, sometimes up to 80% of little leopard cub deaths are caused by strange and unrelated males. And so if all the males in the area think that they are the father of you know, a particular crop of c cubs, then that gives them a certain amount of safety. And we also don't know if multi-paternity is possible in leopards. So if a female mates with two males, is it possible that she could have one cub from each of them, or two from one and one from the other? And I must just reiterate here what Harry Camacho said the other day. He's the chap who's been following. He's the chap who's been following Sandila and, you know, tracking his movements. He said to try and uh, ascertain some kind of paternity from spot patterns is an impossibility. So although, as we watch Karula's youngsters, Shongile and Hosanna grow up, then you know, it's going to be impossible. We think that Tingana's kids, uh, but it would be impossible for us to say for sure from a, the look that they have. Although, I too have been very tempted, having seen Sindile recently, to say that he has got Mvularish type eyes. And, yeah, I mean, look, I don't think there's any harm in doing that. Uh, will we ever know? Yes, I think we probably will eventually, because we've got all their DNA now. Whether that information will be released to the public willy-nilly. Well, we hope it will, but whether or not it will or not, I don't know. But there's absolutely no harm in having a hard speculate, because it doesn't make any difference to the animals, and it often makes us think a little bit differently. So if you want to speculate about who's the father of whom, then that's absolutely fine, I think. Let's go down here. Shamrock, nice to hear from you again. Haven't heard from you for some time. Sorry, Louise, I got a little excited there from hearing from Shamrock again. Um, you're going to have to give me the last half of the question again. Right, good one. So, the leopards were calling around here, a water buck, a potential prey species for a very large male leopard, for not one like that, probably. But Shamrock, your question is, would that water buck have picked up on the fact that they were mating leopards, and uh, would, would any prey species be pick up on the fact that a mating pair is possibly less dangerous than a non-mating pair that might be stalking. Would they hear that noise and think to themselves, ah, we're okay, they've got other things on their minds. Uh, Shamrock, I would say... I would say yes. I would say that they do realise what's going on. Or certainly that there is a, um, a certain amount of... Uh, or less danger than there might be, for two reasons. First of all, we know that a territorial call from an animal definitely results in the prey species being a lot more comfortable, because if, an, if a leopard is walking along this road and they're impala over there and it makes those territorial sawing noises, it's saying, basically saying, I'm not on the hunt here, I am marking territory and they are two different activities. That's the one thing. The second thing is that if you watch a leopard, for example, when impala start to rut, when male leopards start, uh, male impala rut with each other and they fight, it immediately creates a response in predators. So they will move towards rutting animals because they know they're not paying attention to their surroundings. And I don't see why the opposite shouldn't be the same. Here are some zebra. We're having quite a morning this, today, Brian. Very lucky. This zebra, Brian, has just crossed, which negates the, negates the need for us to make that really terrible joke. 
I don't know if you can pick up on the whiteness of the light, everybody, how quickly it turned from that red to orange to yellow and now to white. Winter is becoming a thing of the past. It's going to be hot today, silent. Just the odd southern black tit I can hear in the background going... You know what else I can hear? Brian, can I ask you to switch the ambient mic towards the far west there and see if you can pick up the sound of the cattle bells. Just listen carefully, everybody. They've now stopped. But I believe Brent did hear them earlier as well. I've always found it quite a comforting sound sound of cattle going out to graze. There, they've stopped now. All we can hear is the ve ve, the ve 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 sound of the lilac breasted roller. Okay, let's move on from our zebra. He doesn't look particularly panicked by life. Doesn't seem to have seen any mating leopards around the place. And Deborah Armchair Traveller, you make a very good point and a very good case for multi-paternity in leopards because you say the egg is only released from the ovary once intercourse has taken place. So once fertilization is there. Yeah, I think that's one of the arguments for it. But nobody has actually ever confirmed it. I think it would be so fascinating to know. Imagine... Shongila and Hosanna had different dads, and uh, Quarantine and Kunuma, for example, who many of you watched for a long time. They're now almost four, I think, aren't they? Yes, four in December. Five in December, four in December. And you, they have completely different characters. One is a rather sort of aggressive wanderer, that's Kunuma. The other, extremely relaxed very chilled out, been spending time in his dad's territory until very recently, it was dad's old territory certainly, and some Vula we think is his father. Completely different characters. Maybe that means that they have got different dads. But it's just as likely that they're just different people in the same way that different siblings in the same family uh, grow up with different characters. Right, so we're now, we're kind of doing a circle around the block where we thought the tracks might come out and we're now heading down <coughs> towards Ingwe Alley, around about where Brent is. I think he's there. And we'll see if we can't give him a hand there. He's earning some well-earned well time off on foot at the moment. He's trying to track those leopards. Let's see what else we can find of great import. An interest. There come the zebra, Brian. They don't want to leave us. James Richard, you want to know if I have dirt or sand on the back of my shirt? Indeed, James Richard, I do. Such is the life, the terribly, terribly physical, um, physical life of the uh, wild earth presenter. What I had to do, everyone, was demonstrate my ostrich attracting. Um, I wouldn't call it a dance so much as performance, and that was for the camera this morning. So I have been lying on the ground. There is a zebra mare, very clearly, heavily pregnant. And DKW says these zebras are beautiful creatures rocking that full mohawk. The mohawk is impressive, and it is also, DKW, a very good indicator of their health. When the mohawk starts to lie down, like a punk after a heavy night out, it means that the fat in the neck that's holding the hair up is starting to be used up, and that means that the zebra is in some form of nutritional distress. 
These chaps are absolutely fine though. She's very fat. And there's going to be a new little zebra in these parts before too long, I think. Hello, Yankees girl. You want to know what these zebras are doing when they ruffle their skin or twitch their muscles? I think it's as simple, Yankees girl, as getting rid of flies. They s twitch their skin and the flies eventually let, let, you know, let go of them. So I think that's why they do it. All animals do it. Dogs do it. Cats do it. Zebras do it. Even educated fleas do it, Brian. And birds. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's carry on. <laughs> right here. <laughs> I thought I was very funny there, everyone. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to laugh at yourself. Most times, yes. <laughs> no one else is going to. Yeah, still no further sound of those leopards. And you know, they will when it gets hot like this. They will go to ground and they'll have a long sleep for a while. It's so open. I can't believe how open it is. And I'll just show you the exact place from which or where we were looking towards the other side when I said look through there I'm just trying to get into a position where we can see quarantine now if you look off to the left hand side there you can see quarantine clearings in all its glory here it is now in summer you'd have no view of that at all isn't that amazing? That's where we were today. Not ten minutes ago. Marvellous. Alrighty. Birds, very quiet. Let's go and quickly get an update from Brent about those tracks and I'll see you shortly. So unfortunately those tracks were not of Karula, they were of the mating pair. So uh, my nemesis is for the morning. I don't even want to talk about those nemesis for the moment, they really gave us a hard time. But I mean we are live in the African bush so uh, it's very difficult to make everything a pair when we want. Hopefully we're just going to shake it off and uh, try again on the sunset safari. Hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck. Uh, but from Viam and myself, we've thoroughly, enjoy uh, thoroughly enjoyed having you uh, on our unsuccessful leopard hunt. It was fun. It was a beautiful morning. We did see some birds. We saw some interesting little things. But uh, from Viam and myself now, uh, we're going to go hang our heads in shame and camp and think about how we can rectify it for the sunset safari. So, uh, toodles for now, and see you in a few short hours. I really don't think any uh, head hanging in shame is required. Uh, not that I think it's genuinely going to happen. But um, the, uh, Brian and I were just saying that we reckon that unless you are a tracker the likes of which we don't really have here I mean Herbert is, is pretty good but to track leopards from a vehicle is nigh on impossible and so you know the tracks get you into the right area and then you just have to have an enormous amount of luck and as I was as Brian was just saying you know they could be under that bush there we could just look that way as we went past you wouldn't see them There's so much luck involved so I don't think Brent should be hanging his head in shame, nor should Viam. Especially as they've had very little time to be on foot today. As we have monopolized the time. We'll just do one quick turn around here. I 
think this is around about where Brent was. Ooh. Brian, did you see the Oriole land? It's, it's, it's flying there. It's on that horizontal lower branch, just up to the left. Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. The black-headed Oriole, everybody. So beautiful. Look at that. We don't often get great views of them like this. And I so look forward to trying again this year to get the European or African Golden Orioles on camera properly because they are truly spectacular. Oh, that's marvellous. Then, Brian, if you come to the left, there is a little flock of white crested helmet shrikes over there. Just on that dead knob thorn. There we are. And they'll just be moving on there, trying to find whatever they can. They're sort of leaf gleaners. They go up and down the trees and see if they can't find bits and pieces uh, hanging from the leaves, hanging from the branches. Those sort of inchworms that we sometimes find, or even the spiders that live in the folded leaves. not being particularly confiding. Righty. This was the drainage system that I think Brent was looking around in. Morning Glory, you're absolutely right. You say sometimes the hunt is half the fun of looking for the leopards and you've had a great morning drive. Well, that's brilliant because I agree with you and it's the only way that you can live out here because sometimes you be have all the luck and sometimes you don't and there ain't now you can do about it but right, we're going to head back for breakfast now everybody and then I'm afraid you'll be with me for most of the afternoon as Brent does the same sort of thing as we were doing this morning So a huge thank you to Brent and VM for holding the show today and of course to Louise and Rebecca in the final control for their work today and Brian for your thumb and your efforts today filming me. Thank you so much for trying to make me look better than I do. Uh, to all of you, thank you for being with Brent today. I'm sure he drew a great amount of pleasure and joy from spending the morning with you, as did I. We'll see you at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Bye-bye. <laughs>